you are now tuned in to the coronavirus edition of the network, the YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs it down to a more simple language. Today's topics is controllers, wireless controllers, section 1.1E, Cisco DNA Center, and WLC, which stands for wireless local area network controllers. This is a topic in the CCNA, uh, the CCNA exam. Let's go ahead and take a look at exam blueprint to uh, see what we're covering. So this, again, this is for CCNA exam version 1.0. This is uh, the test exam code is 200-301. Again, um, we already covered access points. And in this video, again, we're going to cover controllers, Cisco DNA Center, and WLC, which stands for Wireless Local Area Network Controllers. Uh, we are not going to be covering, remember I said I'm going to be doing just mostly wireless stuff, so I'm going to skip all this other stuff. If y'all want me to cover the rest of these other topics in the CCNA exam, you know, I need to be like at like 10,000 subscribers or something like that. And before I start covering every single bullet point on this uh, exam here. But anyways, so what is a wireless controller? Think about a video game controller, right? If you got like, you know, Sonic or... Super Mario, you, he's useless without somebody behind him with a controller, controlling him, right? Because otherwise, if you don't control him, he's just going to stand there and look at you, right? If you're watching TV, you can't do nothing. Well, you, I guess you could walk over to the TV and change the channel if you wanted to. But it's a lot easier if you have a, a wireless remote control to control, you know, to change the channels or control the volume or put it in sleep mode or whatever, you know. Where does a where does where do controllers fall in in the in the local area network, right? You might be wondering. Remember in the last video we covered access points, right? So before we even go further, remember what access points are. They're basically like hotspots, right? You find them in the ceiling of your, you know, favorite you know, McDonald's or any other restaurant or something like that, or Starbucks or something, and that basically gets you onto the internet, right? Well, what if you got like a whole bunch of control, a bunch of access points, right? What if you got a whole bunch of access points that you need to control? You need to put them in certain acts, um, certain groups, or you need to deploy certain rules, policies to them, or whatever. Put them in certain VLANs or whatever the case may be. It's easier to do it with a centralized device, and that's what a wireless controller does. It allows you to manage several access points on the network. Let's go ahead and take a look at the official definition here though. So controllers, a device that cooperates with, with wireless lightweight access points to create a wireless LAN or local area network by performing some control functions for each LWAP. What's an LWAP? Again, lightweight access point and forwarding data between each LWAP and the wired LAN. Remember what I said, an access point is a device that takes all the wireless signals and puts them onto the wired network, right? And remember, behind every wireless local area network is a wire, right? Remember I said that in the last video with access points, right? It controls and manages all AP functions, for example, roaming, defining WLANs, authentication, so on and so forth. Again, if you've got one access point, right, you can just have a trunk from the access point to a switch and it'll carry all your VLANs through that trunk, right? But if you've got a whole bunch of access points that are not in lightweight mode, remember we talked about, well, we'll cover what the difference between uh, lightweight mode and autonomous mode, right? They don't really have that much you can do on them. You need the controller. It's just like a, you know, it's just like the remote control or it's just like a video game controller. You need that to control the access points. Because if you got a whole bunch of them, it's a lot easier. I've been doing this a lot through the whole video than that. If you got a whole bunch of access points, you need the controller to basically control them. And that's basically what a controller does. You look at the screen here on the left-hand side, we got the physical view of a wireless controller. On the right-hand side, this is the logical view. This is like so if you have a network map or network topology, that's what it's going to look like, right? So let's talk about what the difference between lightweight mode and autonomous mode, right? An access point... Remember, this, this is what an access point looks like right here, right? I wish I had this. I just bought this on eBay. I wish I had this on the last video because I had the, the free ones that I got for my job that really wasn't working, right? So maybe I'll do another video on access points. But anyways, an autonomous AP is a standalone device, right? 
Nothing else is needed to forward Ethernet frame from a wired let from a wired that says VLAN from a wired WLAN to a wireless LAN and vice versa. In effect, an a, the AP maps each VLAN to a WLAN in a BSS. A BSS is a basic service set, right? So basically, this network would be considered the basic service set, right? You got just the AP right here. It's connected to the trunk. This link right here carries all the VLANs, right? If you don't know what VLANs are, read this, the OCG manual, or maybe I'll do another video on uh, um, VLANs, right? Virtual local area network, right? Carries all the VLANs on this trunk and brings on the switch. And, and 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 takes you onto to your to your merry way onto the internet, right? But this is all fine and dandy when you have it in autonomous mode, all your VLANs and stuff like that. And then, but let's say you got a whole bunch of these autonomous APs, right? Actually, before we move on to that, let's talk about lightweight mode, right? So, a lightweight, a lightweight AP connection. Uh, the lightweight AP gets its name because the code image. And the local intelligence are stripped down or lightweight. So it's basically a lighter version of an autonomous mode AP, right? So it compared to the traditional autonomous AP, the, the management functions are usually performed on a wireless local area network controller or WLC. Sometimes you might hear it called, which controls many lightweight APs. So again, if we got a whole, but now a lightweight AP, the way it gets communicates um, onto the network is it is controlled by the wireless local area local area network controller or WLC right but it gets all its um all of VLANs and stuff like that are are communicated through the CAPWAP tunnel right this right here is called the CAPWAP tunnel it stands for control access provisioning I can't remember I'll put a link in the description below on what CAPWAP stands for it's a whole acronym but anyways all the VLANs are carried across the CAPWAP tunnel right you would think, why don't you just go straight to the local area network and then go that way, right? Well, it doesn't work that way because this is an access link. And through an access link, you can only have one VLAN at a time, right? So it needs to go through the CatWeb tunnel and the wireless local area network controls the lightweight access point through the CatWeb tunnel, right? But if you've got a whole bunch of lightweight access points, that is where the wireless controller comes in because you are able to control all the lightweight access points with the controller. You can't do it through the local area. And you can't do it through just the layer three, even if it's a layer three or layer two switch, you can't control like the security functions. Yeah, you can do port security and stuff like that, but you can only do it one at a time. Even if you do interface range mode, you can't put them in different AP groups. You can't control, you can't, you know, you can't control the SSIDs or the, you know, like the, the network that it broadcasts. You know how like if you go on your, here, I'll show y'all real quick. I, I explained this in the last video too. You know how you go and check for networks, right? In your neighborhood like this, and you have that these are the SSIDs, right? You can't you can't control that stuff on the switch. This is done on the wireless local area network controller or the wireless the WLAN controller. So that's that's the uh, the role it plays in the network, right? You control all like all of its data goes through the CapWap tunnel. Now there's different modes like Flex Connect stuff like that. As we go further along through these series, these wireless videos, we'll talk about those different modes. So again, the management functions are usually performed on the wireless LAN controller, which controls many lightweight APs. So again, autonomous APs, it carries all of the VLANs and stuff through this trunk, and then you get on your merry way. You do all the you know management on the physical AP itself. But if you've got a whole bunch, now this is fine if you've got like one or two APs, in, in a small restaurant or a small business or small office or whatever, Soho office, or whatever the case may be, that's fine with an autonomous AP. But when you got when you when you have them in lightweight mode and you have a whole bunch, if you got like my job, for example, we have one region that just has 2000 APs and that's just one region. We've got several regions throughout the United States. So and they're controlled on a wireless controller. All these like there's thousands of APs that you that you use the wireless controller for. That you can't, it's hard to do that individually. And that's what, that's the difference why you have lightweight mode versus uh, autonomous mode. Let's go ahead and fire up Packet Tracer. Y'all know my favorite application. I like going back to the basics and stuff. And I love Packet Tracer. It's a great simulator. I will put the link to this uh, lab in the description below. Let's go ahead and fire up that bad boy and play with 
uh, basic wireless local area network controller. All right, so here is the topology we are going to be playing with today. This is the address guide right here. In this lab, you will explore some of the features of wireless local area network controller. That's pretty much it. I ain't gonna read all that to y'all. Y'all can play. Y'all can read that um, when y'all download this lab. We got a wireless host right here. This guy is a uh, server. This is the router. This the these are the two act. No, actually, just got one access point in this one. Didn't even realize that. We got the wireless access point right here. We got a local. We got a layer three switch. We got an admin PC. Oh, by the way. I downloaded these icons. I just created them myself. And, you know, if y'all want, y'all want some of these, you know, I'll put a link in the description or just, you know, send me an email or leave a comment below. And this is the wireless controller we're going to be playing with here. This is a, I believe, a 3504 model right here. You know, I've seen one of these. In order for us to log on to it, we are going to have to get onto it via the admin PC, I believe. Let's go ahead and read the uh, objectives here. We're going to we're going to connect to the wireless controller via the GUI. Explain some of the information that's available on the screen. So when you log in, you'll learn how to. Uh, once y'all get this lab, you know you'll learn how to play with it, learn, learn the menu and stuff like that, and you know basically learn how a wireless controller works. Again, we use this device control. An AP, right? But if we got a thousand APs in this network right here, we can use this to control all of them at the same time. Monitor the WSC. Wait until STP has converged, as we and we have, because we've got all forwarding ports right here. You can click the fast forward. We don't need to do that. Go to the admin PC. Let's go ahead and keep this up top and open up a browser. Open up the browser and enter the management IP of the WLC1 from the addressing table. You must specify HTTPS. Just like any other, you know, that's what I love about Packet Tracer. They they really simulate it. To get on a wireless controller, you need to get into it via HTTPS and then the IP address. IP address here is 192.168.200.254 slash 24, right? So we're going to put HTTPS colon slash slash. We may or may not have time to do uh, DNA Center. I'll probably put it in the next video. 200.254. Y'all know I like to keep these videos short and simple. Go, we may have to do, oh, look, it took us right there. And that's pretty much how the wireless controller looks like when you log on to it. I think it's a little bit more, you know, I think it's blue once you really log, initially log on to it. Admin, Cisco123, Cisco123, and that's a capital C, log in. And it may take a minute before it logs in. It says after a short delay. See, they really, they really uh, simulated it. And this is how a wireless controller looks like. So if y'all have never seen one before, you know, this is what I love about Packet Tracer. They really, they really simulated it. You know, there's a lot of features that are, that are disabled on here. So you can't really do much, but, uh, you know, as long as you learn these menus right here and kind of go through them and stuff like that, you'll really learn how a wireless controller works and where a lot of the features are. Anyways, after we log in, it says here, it does not support the initial dashboard that has been demonstrated. In this module, scroll through the monitor summary screen. What can be learned from this screen? As you can see, you can learn what a, 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 a 3504 model looks like. Whenever it decides to pop up, we can see what cable is connected, as you can see right there. Whenever you plug up another one, you'll see these light up. Uh, this is the console ports right here. That is a USB. We got, you know. Some other management ports right here. We can see what version of the uh, now a wireless local area network controller does not. You can get into it via CLI as well, but um, it's a different version of iOS than you would see on a regular switch, like a layer two, a layer three switch, or even a router. They have they have different codes for uh, the wireless controllers. We can see this is the recovery version image. So if we wipe this clean. This is what it's gonna you know get on you know this is what we're going to load up this is the host name has been up for 18 minutes system time temperature etc that's not a real temperature again this is a simulator uh, we can see how many ap's we got we got one that's up right here it is the wlc connected with an ap we answered our question right there click detail next to the all ap entry in the access point summary where's detail right there what information can you find about ap's on all ap's in the ap screen well, once that loads up, we'll answer that question. We can see the host name of the L, the, the uh, AP or access point. We click it. As you can see, this feature is not supported in Packet Tracer, so we can't get in there. Once you log into it, like in a, on a real local area network switch, uh, controller, you'll see like the uptime of the AP, 
you'll see uh, what version, what code of uh, uh, iOS is loaded on the AP. You can see, um, I think, the, the, the CapWeb join time. You can see the uptime for the tunnel, stuff like that. Um, but, you know, again, this is Packet Tracer, so you ain't going to be able to see all that on this one. We can see the model, as you can see here. That's it. Now it says here they want us to part two, create a wireless LAN. You will create a you will now create a wireless local air network on the WLC. Configure the settings that are required for hosts to join the WLAN. We are going to create and enable the LAN. How do we do that? Click on WLANs. Where is that? Right here. And the WLC menu bar. Locate the drop down box in the upper right hand. It says upper right had corner. It's a miss. Uh, mistype there of the WLAN screen it will say create new so where do we do that we got to scroll over and see he said upper right hand corner of the damn WLAN screen it should be over here somewhere oh there it goes what am I thinking create new and then you're going to click go to create the new WLAN so basically you go, we're going to be making uh one of these we're going to be making a WLAN this is these are your SSIDs but they're they're basically wireless local and error networks so we're going to create one of those basically is what we're doing says here profile name uh, the profile name in this is going to be floor two employees uh, assign an SSID of SSID-5 SSID-5 host will need to use this to uh, use this SSID SSID to join the network so they're going to see um, SSID no, I believe they're gonna see floor two employees we'll see uh, select the ID for the WLAN. This value is a label that we use to identify the WLAN is other displays. This value is a label that will be used to identify the WLAN is other displays. Th that must be a typo as well. Uh, select a value of five to keep it consistent with the VLAN number. So we're going to click five here. We're going to click apply for the settings to take effect. Now that the WLAN is created, you'll see it takes a little bit. Click enabled to make the WLAN functional. It's a common mistake to accidentally skip this step. Funny, functioning, funny they mentioned that because that is exactly what happened to me when I initially did this last. So we're going to make sure we click enabled here. Now it's enabled, but we, you know, we need to click apply too, right? Choose the VLAN interface that will be used for the WLAN. That's already in the, uh, in the layer three switch, which is located right here, right? Bring that bad boy back up. Scroll down to the Flex Connect portion of the page, which is down here. Uh, did we click Apply yet? Well, we need to click the uh, the VLAN the VLAN interface. So in this case, it's WLAN five. This interface was previously configured on the WLC for this activity, so they already created it. Click on the Advanced tab, which is located here. And we could also do Security, QoS, Policy Mapping. Well, remember, once you log, you know, once you download this lab, y'all just, you know, kind of go through this menu. And again, not every function is available on this. Again, Packet Tracer, Packet Tracer is a simulator, so it's basically like a fake version of uh, of this application here. Um, click on the Advanced tab. Scroll down to the Flex Connect portion, which is down here. Where is that? There it is right there. Click to enable Flex Connect local switching and for next Flex Connect local authentication. Click apply to enable the new WLAN, which is right here. If you forget to do this, the WLAN will not operate. We've got 22% of the lab complete, as you can see right here. That's another reason why I love Packet Tracer. Y'all know how much I love Packet Tracer. Any of my uh, lawyer subscribers know I used to love, you know, at the beginning of my video series, I did a bunch of packaging. But as we got more advanced, you know, we had to graduate to GNS3 and Boson, a more, you know, complicated application, not complicated, but more advanced applications. Again, okay, so changing the parameters, well, oh, I guess I didn't click. Uh, I didn't click apply the first time. Changing WLAN parameters while it is enabled will cause the WLAN to be momentarily disabled momentarily disabled and thus may result in a loss of connectivity for some clients press okay to continue so you do this you know if you got some you know users that are on your network on that ssid they'll be you know disconnected for a little bit so this is why you have to have change or if you're you know in the middle of a p2 or or, or a p1 ticket you ain't worried about all that because they probably lost connectivity anyway but anyways just know that you can you gotta have some clients that lose connectivity when you do that um the new WLAN has currently no has no security in place. So again, this is just like when you 
log on to your networks right here. You know how when you got to, let's say you want to get into this guy right here. What's it going to ask you? You say connect, right? It's going to ask you for the security key. And that's basically what we do here. We're going to create a security for, key for this as for the basically the floor two employees. Make sense? In another activity, you will configure, con configure WLAN to use WPA2. In this case, we're going to use WPA2 PSK security. So we're going to click security. Uh, WPA PA2. This will reveal the WPA parameters. Click the checkbox next to WPA2 policy, which is right here. Did we click it? Yes, we did. We're going to do AES, and I don't believe we're going to do TKIP. If y'all don't know what those are, that's basically like authentication enabled, no encryption security. I can't remember. I'll leave it in the link in the description below. It's basically a different type of WPA2 encryption. Um, Enable PSK. Y'all know what PSK stands for? That's pre-shared key. That's basically password. Y'all know they like to make these funny uh, or these complex names. Y'all know I like to dumb it down to what, something simpler. PSK is basically the password, right? In this case, the password is capital C, lowercase I-S-C-O. One, two, three is the passphrase. Uh, we enabled WPSK. We clicked the box on the WPA2 policy. If y'all know the difference between these are, they came out with WEP, which is wired equivalent equivalent privacy, which is like a, basically a, a type of uh, a way to put passwords, right? But back in the day, it was really, it was cracked really easily, right? You can crack a WEP password really easy. So they came up with WPA. And WPA was kind of cracked easily. So they came up with WPA2. And then they got the WPA2 uh, Enterprise and WPA2, what's the other one again? Uh, I think just WPA2 personal. Yeah, so basically it's like the home version versus the office version or, you know, like a, a enterprise, like an organization version of it. So that's basically the, the y'all quick history of, of a WP, WEP, WPA, and WPA2. So they just came out with stronger encryptions as, you know, as time passed because they were like, there's so many hackers that are out there. That's why security pays so much. People are always trying to hack in your systems. It is not a good practice to reuse passwords, which is what we did here. We have reused read passwords in this activity just to simplify configuration. We're going to verify the settings. Did we click apply yet? Don't know if we did that. So let's make sure we do that. Click apply. And that's what it says here. Again, you're going to lose your, uh, you know, your clients. Clients are going to lose connectivity if you do. If you're in the middle of production of doing this, don't really want you want to make sure you have some downtime before you do all of this. And there it's saved right there. Y'all see how the simulation works, man? This is just like that's exactly how it works, too. We're at 55% complete. Go to the desktop of the wireless host and click the PC wireless tile. So we're going to go to the wireless host, which is located right here. Click the wireless tile. We're going to go to desktop, wireless. And there's no, we have no association with an access point. So basically, we got a wireless host, but we're not connected to the Wi Fi. So we at the Starbucks right now, and we ain't got no Wi Fi. How we do that? We're going to go to the connect, uh, refresh, and I think it should, oh, it showed up. There it was. There it goes right there. We got 63% signal, and there's our SSID. So it's just like if we did like this right here. We click our Wi Fi right here, and we see all the wireless net, local area networks. If there was another one, there'd be a list right here, right? We click connect. We're going to put our pre shared key, which was capital C I S C O one, two, three. And before I do that, I want y'all to see. Uh, let me make this a little wider so y'all can see. Uh, we ain't got no signal strength right here, right? Here's the link quality, right? We click connect. It was Cisco one, two, three. Excuse me. Connect. And uh, should be connected in a second here. I believe we're connected. There it goes. And the way, way you can tell it's connected by this little, you know, fake radio signal here. So we connect it to the access point. And basically, there it goes right there, right? So what else they want us to do here? From wireless host, ping the WLAN default gateway and the server to verify the laptop has full connectivity. So basically, they want us from the wireless host to ping the gateway. And then they want us to ping from the wireless host to the server. So what we're going to do is 
painted gateway, which is, I don't remember what that is, so we're just going to do IP config. His gateway was 192.168.5.1. So that is this interface right there. Go ahead and ping 192.168.5.1. We got a reply. Now they want us to ping. We got some replies right there. No loss. They want us to ping the server, which the server, we check the address guide, we'll see it is, I'm sorry, 172.31.1.254. So we're going to ping. 172.31.1.254 and we also got a reply and that's pretty much it we're at 100 percent what do we got enough time to cover dna center no nah, we had like 20 something minutes here y'all know how i like to keep these videos short and simple uh this is you know i went a little over past my past my limit here y'all know i like to keep these videos at least 20 minutes so we went over a little a little over um on this video maybe because I talk too much or whatever the case may be so we're gonna cover DNA Center in the next video this is just be a part one um, if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button if you're not subscribed to this channel please hit the subscribe button you know y'all know I like to keep this stuff real simple uh, again you will see a link to uh, a link to this lab in the description below go ahead and download this lab that was version I have Cisco uh, Packet Tracer version 7.3. I believe you can probably open this lab with 7.2 as well. But anyways, uh, that's my YouTube page. Again, click the like button, hit the subscribe button. In other words, comment, like, subscribe to the network.